Hello YouTube, Ronin Kazi, Legendary District Union. All right, so one thing that I want to do for a long time is I want to start District Union from the back side. So I happened to start a District Union, was made the group leader, was searching for people, so I ran around to the other side, and I'm attacking it from the back side. I slowly will add people. I'm not adding them. The Division 2 slowly adds people to the group on the other side, so we have them in this pincer move. It's pretty effective. I'm using the Vial Jammer. Uh, one of the things I'd like to do is give you the content from different angles and different strategy. There's not a lot that I haven't done in the Division 2 as far as the legendaries. Maybe Manny National Zoo and Tidal Basin. I don't get to run those as much. But you'll see how this works. Now, one of the other things that I like to talk about in the Division 2 is teamwork and leadership and those kind of things. The team ship, the team ship, the team nature of a pickup group is one where you're just going on hopefully pre-established norms that not everyone has. Uh, I'm not talking to them in chat. They're not talking to me in chat. I basically look at someone's watch level and determine for myself like how well they're going to do it. Usually lower watch levels means people are going to extend further. It's not always the case. I've been in some groups where people uh, have low watch levels. Maybe it's an alt or something. They just rock through there. Or maybe they're just inherently good players. This is on normal speed because we get through this pretty quickly. You see when the helos come down, it just, you stop that push and it allows the other folks to come in and really put a lot of damage out to the mobs that are coming in. And so the Division 2 gives me a chance to talk about group dynamics and leadership principles. And what you're going to see uh, insidiously, not very overt, but you're going to see the, the signs of fails in a group. And one of those signs in a legendary is people can habitually dying quite a bit. People always overextending. And there's some parts in the map that are DPS checks. So, like I've said in these legendary, I call them classic legendaries, it's hard to funnel the enemy. They make it so it's hard to funnel the enemy through one spot. You have them coming out that fence on the other side, but they're sending uh, grenades mortars and drones out at you and they're in a protected area so it makes it kind of hard with me being in the back side it makes it a lot easier also i'm going to be experimenting with uh i have a uh, legendary build which is basically a build where i use uh hunters uh whatever that skill set that gives you 10% damage reduction to elites. And then I have improvised armor where I have like 80% elite damage reduction. So I'm going to be able to hang out with the chungas and all the yellows. I'm just going to be scared of purples really or what I got to be scared of. I also in this build have additional healing. So I heal quite a bit. Now, I might change this back and forth through here because eventually I haven't gotten my weekly yet. So I'm just trying to get my weekly. And as you see the signs happening, I'll explain more about what's going on. Uh, last time I did four legendaries. I have enough to do four legendaries. Um, but I, I don't I think it's more important to show you like why it fails and how it fails. So this next section, this first part of the next section is just a routine tank and spank, as they like to say in other games. But really, what we're going to run into, it's a DPS on the backside when three chungas come. 
if you're in a group and you kill the chungas on the other side of where I am, that's the demarcation. That's the line where they shouldn't cross. Once they cross that line, you know you don't have enough DPS. So I'm up front because I have a DPS build with the shotgun. I'm doing a lot of damage. And um, I have pulse just to knock out temporarily some of their... Not, and here we are. <laughs> Here we are on the, and we are gonna wipe here pretty soon. So normally YouTube, this is when I ask you to like, subscribe, share, unsubscribe, resubscribe, hit the comments when they're working, notifications. All your little bit you do helps sharing it. I appreciate you for sharing. So I do something I normally never do, but I'm gonna throw out a revive hive because I've started, I realize I've started this video and I've gone from the other side. I don't want it to wipe here because it's hard to put that footage in. I want to put that footage, but shouldn't die there, shouldn't get pushed back. And other runs I did this week on this legendary, I had someone had four directives. Now, this is what I'm going to tell you. Normally, when I've had people put in a lot of directives on a legendary, invariably they quit. They quit YouTube because <laughs> they're scrubs. It's hard enough already. Don't quit when you set the directives up. That's just, I don't know what to say. That's less than if you set the directives up and you quit. Now, if you're trolling me and you're going to quit, then that's great. But we could still get through it without you which we did without you, scrub, but don't do it. And what do the directives do? It just makes everything go slower, especially the one where they start raging, so you just got to put out more damage. And if you don't have a lot of damage, which the person didn't, then you're just not going to kill them fast enough. So you're going to have problems the whole time. The problem with me throwing out a Revive Hive, this build I have on right there is the fastest recharge. So the problem is that you limit yourself just to one skill then. That's why I don't like using the Revive Hive. Because then I can't, I don't have the flexibility to change the skills. But these are some of the signs when you have people that just die unnecessarily. I eventually went back through and had a run where we just went through pretty easy and went all the way through to the end. And in that, I think I also kept a, uh, except for two of the phases, I kept a DPS build going on through there. So what do you do when you can't communicate with your teammates? At this point, I just given up. I don't really try to tell people. Uh, it's cringy when you're in a group and you have one person try and tell everyone else what to do. I very seldom do it. Every once in a while on Roosevelt, when you go over that wall, that's kind of the option. At Roosevelt, you either go over the wall and fight immediately in the containers, or you clear everything and run to the boat. <laughs> oh, that's Roxy, everyone. What Roxy does is she jumps over the fence and then tries to run to the boat. Fail. Number two, what people do is they will half clear, then try to run to the boat, and that's a fail also. It's when you mix these strategies. You got to be a really strong group to do that. If you, I was going to do that, I would have decoys. Everyone would have a decoy. And as they're running, they throw out the decoy. Uh, and then, and then, and then. The decoys taunt Roxy. The decoys taunt is based on your skills. So if you have people with DPS builds, it doesn't help that much. Maybe they have a revive. In those kind of scenarios, you could talk people through that and you could just do whatever. But in general, when you're not talking, these are some of the strategies that you should do. And you can see at this point, we've been pushed. Maybe we haven't been pushed yet, but this is the point where you're fighting this one area. Then you're going to open up to where the chungas come in. You're going to open up into the bar area. And again, you're going to see how much DPS you have. I think if I remember on this one, I tried to take the flank here. So what I'm trying to do is protect everyone's flank. And 
so that's part of the key in some of this stuff. But you're never going to get through it. If you have people that are consistently dying, it's going to make it harder. Again, think about your build. Think about anything in life. When, you, uh, when you're structured to have a group of four people doing it, you're, when you lose one of those people, even at work, you have a 25% reduction. No matter how good everyone else is, you can't expect everyone in every single situation to give 150% all the time. Again, you can only give 100%. And when you're given 100% and someone leaves, uh, you have no excess capacity. So maybe you're really giving 80%. So if you guys have to get a project done that takes, uh, you know, 200, an average of 50% of everyone's stuff so they can do some other stuff, answer emails and whatever. But when someone goes and you're losing that 50%, everyone's percentages go up. They might get other calls for data or whatever else. This is the area I'm talking about. This is another DPS check. Again, a lot of people will go up forward and they have a revive hive, they'll get one revive. But the problem is by the time the rehive, revive hive goes off, you're too far in there. So you can't escape out of there. And I've learned this over failing a bunch of times, not the, maybe the group failing, but me failing. The best capability is availability. I finally remembered how to say it. So getting back to the person that made all the directives, we failed a lot in there and it was a lot of overextension. They eventually just quit. I I got made the group leader and did, we just went through it. But then I just, you know, I think I just did vial jammers the whole way through there and played super conservatively. So this is usually the make or break of all the groups. There's... Again, we split because we're not talking. Some of the people go up top. Some of the people are on the bottom. I'm staying hidden. And so you see what happens. The, the guy never comes to revive me. And so this is part of the problem. I could hit the little button that said, hey, revive me. But I know what kind of group this is. I've said this to you before. When you know you're going to wipe. Sometimes you have the decision whether you just let it happen or not. Because if we're, if we don't wipe here, there's the next little section we'll get through. We'll wipe in the next section because we won't suppress the drones enough, and we'll just get overrun by drones because we don't have enough DPS. And so now I'll switch and we'll look at what they're doing. But we have two people on top and two people on the bottom. Someone should say, "What are we going to do?" What do you do in the apps and all that? You should do whatever the group leader does, right? Sometimes I've been in this scenario and there's been a couple videos on uh, what I did on one of the other videos. I We got pushed like that by two chungas down low. I almost play down there exclusively now. I got pushed by two chungas chung is down low but because i have unbreakable i ran past and went upstairs and revived the two other people and then we went on and kept doing it but at a certain point right you have to lure people away and then you have to go to a different spot dude you're not going to live there you're just going to die there and so you'll see a guy gets revived over here and then he doesn't go to revive other people he just stays he's you know it's it's horrible, YouTube. It's, that's the anatomy of a fail. You can see that you're going to fail all the time <clears throat> if a key player goes out. Don't have enough surplus capacity. Uh, what could I have done better? I could add a, a more DPS, I, especially here. I, I think here I did have like a DPS build, but I just got smoked by that thing and no one ever revived me. So maybe I should get better. YouTube, thanks. It's Ronan Kazi. We're about to wipe. Bye.